The popularity of Scotland's national poet has meant a long history of deceitful and even criminal attention. From the time he was alive in the late 18th century, Robert Burns has had poems attributed to him that he did not write. This could be innocent. For instance, the Paisley author Alexander Wilson wrote something of a poetry bestseller when he produced his humorous tale entitled Watty and Meg in 1791. The poem was issued in cheap chapbook form and reputedly sold over 100,000 copies. This sales figure was contributed to by the fact that Wilson was sincerely imitating Burns and a substantial part of his readership believed that Watty and Meg actually was by Burns. Then there are poems that someone knowingly at point of origin pretends are authentic Robert Burns texts. Some successful examples of these circulate in culture and people are fooled genuinely believing Burns to be the author. During the 19th century, many Burns poems, songs, letters, journals and commonplace books remained either only partly published or even completely unpublished. His manuscripts then, as now, were scattered through many different owners. The full extent of Burns' work was far from well known and his corpus was very partially edited from 1800 to the early decades of the 20th century. Many private collectors bought Burns manuscripts, especially from the 1840s, with the result that material flitted in and out of view, appeared and disappeared again, sometimes forever. Such a landscape was, in a sense, an invitation for trouble. In the 19th and 20th centuries, there were many physical Burnsian forgeries. These could include, for example, counterfeit versions of Burns's first book, poems chiefly in the Scottish dialect, of which were published 612 copies in 1786. Today, around 80-something are known to survive, and a good copy might fetch well over £50,000. Most notoriously, we have the forger Alexander Howland Antique Smith, who was sentenced to a period in jail from 1893. Such was the extent of his forging of Burns manuscripts. He counterfeited Burns manuscripts in at least three alleged collections, one of which comprises the 155 manuscripts owned today by the New York Public Library. Ingenious in fabricating the colour of Burns's ink and procuring authentic 18th century paper, Smith was nonetheless caught out. Among other things, he used the wrong kind of pen nib and did not understand the evolution of Burns's handwriting, which transformed through several phases in his life. Our documentary will tell the story and reflect on the culture of Burnsian fakery and fraudulence. At the University of Glasgow, we have studied paper, ink, watermarks and other physical features. We have even worked with colleagues in the physical sciences to analyse manuscripts by Burns and Antique Smith using mass spectrometry and we now have chemical ink signatures for both that can determine authenticity. Join us in 2021 for more on the fascinating story of Burnsian impersonation and criminality. Fakers and Forgers, Counterfeiting Robert Burns, part of the HRC-funded project Editing Robert Burns for the 21st Century at the University of Glasgow. Coming soon. <laughs>